So is anybody in this room now a bit, little bit more uh, interested in the flat earth idea or the truth about the flat earth after what they've seen, after speaking to some other people about it? Um, how do you feel about it now, Tony? I'm still open on it, yeah. <laughs> okay, so the next step gathering was about the next step after the flat earth because when my friend and I came discovered the flat earth um, we, we were saying oh it's the grand deception um, we knew there was a grand deception we never knew what it was and thought this is it we've discovered the grand deception the biggest lie of all um, and then we started saying it's, it's, it's biblical because the shift is so massive but actually, what we didn't know then, uh, maybe six months or eight months into researching the flat earth idea, um, a new lie was revealed where they're actually hiding Jesus Christ, um, the son of God. So the next step gathering was for people who maybe have discovered the flat earth or heard about it. Um, and we're willing to take you, you know, to the next step because it seems from all, people from all different walks of life, backgrounds, beliefs, etc. Uh, how is it possible that, you know, Kira, who's 20, was a, a, a Marilyn Manson fan and going to these strange places and what have you? Kim and I, New Age occultists, into shamanism, spells, magic, witchcraft, and all things like that. Um, Alex was an atheist um, and not, probably not really into anything like that. Joanne is rooted in Jesus but hadn't heard about the flat earth but is more open to that idea now. How is it possible that we all get together and know this truth? But not just know it because we've read about it intellectually, know it because we've experienced the living God in our lives and witnessed him making moves for us because we chose to have eyes in our hearts to see the living God. Kieran, bless him, one week he's at Marilyn Manson, a week after he's at Joanne's house praying with four old women. You know, I mean, you just can't make that up. We're either crazy or it's true, right? And only when you decide for yourself, because the flat earth idea is hidden, the true shape of the earth. Um, so but they're actually, they are hiding God. And when you give yourself the eyes in your heart to see the Lord, he will appear. He's already moved for you. You may not know that, but he has already moved. Um, and he's just waiting for you to see him. And he'll be there right on you. He won't let you down. He's always with you. And once you recognize him, well, you're saved, basically. So the flat earth truth um, makes sense when I see Bible quotes about Lucifer, Satan, the king of lies, exalted himself above the most high. How is that possible? How is it that um, the people who have discovered the flat earth have been taken to the Bible? Because once you know that the earth's created by a loving creator, like David Murphy said, um, I want to find out who that is. Who is that? It is the God of the Bible, without a doubt. So we need to get to know the God of the Bible a little bit more. So Satan said he would exalt himself above the Most High. He hates God. And the only way he can do that, in my view, is to create an illusion, an idea of another earth, taken out of the Bible. Um, God doesn't get any glory for his creation. As simple as it is to us, we can just stand here on this beautiful earth and not know why we are just studying it. On a spinning ball, we need all the complexities of the mass and the gravity, the Coriolis effect and various other nonsense that's been created to allow us to know why we just study it still. But in a simplistic, um, still flat earth, you don't need to know that, you're just, you're just here. So Satan's created the illusion, in my view again, he's got the Bible, which is the 100% truth, the word of God Almighty. It's the only reason you're here. You wouldn't be here without him, no way. So, and he's tilted it, put a 666 angle on it, made it spin, and warped the perception of men into believing that that's where they live. Um, because of the indoctrinated ed education system, which is forced in the minds of our children now, um, we are brought up believing that this is the true nature of the world that we live in. 
but what if it's nice? It's a lie. We are the last generation of people that can stand up for this because those children, my children especially, my son went to George Royal Bank and he comes home telling me all about it. It's like it's been put into their minds as truth. Um, if it's a lie, what are you doing to your children? What are you teaching them? What's going to be left of God and, uh, and uh, everything that's life in a life? So, yeah, Satan said he was like, exalting himself above the Most High. He can only do that in an illusory world that he has made up, wherever a man is given his time, attention, and will to the spinning ball world. Um, and as long as he's got your will in your mind, he's, take, he's taking you away from God. Come back over here. Um, and see, he can use, he's keep you these senses and the free to will, will to go searching for yourself to find these, um, these truths so that you can teach your children, because um, what an absolute insult to God. Why do we need Jesus? What is it about Jesus? Well, Jesus is the Son of God. He is the only uh, holy person, I'll think of a better word, that proclaimed that that it was prophesied before he even came to the earth, that he would be taken like a lamb to the slaughter, the Nazarene. Um, why is he so important? Because the battle, like was explained on Know Your Enemy, for anybody that's interested in watching, that's a 10 hour film thing that's not very good to explain the history of the Bible and he's not left anything out. So the battle is going on in the spirit because he lo Lucifer lives in the air, Satan is in the air and his demons. So how does that work? They can affect your spirit through putting thoughts in our, our people, our situations into your life because anybody that isn't in Jesus is in Satan whether they know it or not, and they can be used by his entities and his demons and his fallen, infiltrating the minds of men and their hearts so that they can then affect other people, taking them further away from God every time. So the war is in the spirit. And Jesus, and I believe that you, the Lord Jesus Christ, were born of a virgin, as a Holy Spirit descended on Mary, making it possible for a virgin to give birth to the Lord and house him with a body. Because what else could God do after keep atoning and sacrificing animals for the sins of the men? Who would never stop who would never stop sinning? The sin's <coughs> too great. It's impossible. So he sent his son. The atonement or at one mint, which brings you back to God and the sacrificing of animals. Um, covered the sins of the people up temporarily and then they would go and sin again and they would have to sacrifice another animal again and again there was lots of bloodshed so God knew that this was happening and was going to send his son Jesus Christ is son of the holy living creator God born of a virgin he was nailed to a cross he shed his blood which saves you for the forgiveness of your sins. Because in those days, animals were sacrificed constantly. Everybody believed in some God or other, whether it was a false God or, or the true God of the Bible. Everybody was worshipping and sacrificing. It was something that was done. People nowadays don't even know that they're sinning. So Jesus' blood hasn't just covered your sin up, it washed it off. You're clean. You're clean. You don't know that. You don't even know that you're sinning because you're a good person, aren't you? Most people would say, oh, I'm a good person, it's okay. Well, it's not about that. You know, it's not about being a good person. It's about recognising what God Almighty has done for you. And if the idea of the, the truth of the still flat earth brings you back to God, it's a, it's a calling card. It's a calling card from God to get his people back truth seekers and anybody that's not involved with the church or anything, people, and go and get my people and the flat earth truth appears to be bringing people back to the Bible. So Jesus' blood has washed your sin off. 
Then he died. He died for your sins. And Satan hasn't got any hold on you anymore because he rose again on the third day to gain victory over Satan in the grave. What does that mean? Well, in the garden, you were walking with God and were with God. And like somebody pointed out, the, the beasts, but they were all tame. Um, every, we were with God. There, there, was no, there was no death, there was no horror, no fear. It, it's, it's like the opposite of God. Yes, yeah, so we're walk, you're walking in, in the garden with God. And then we fell and sin fell upon us. And to save his people, God had to send his son, Jesus Christ, to redeem us, wash our sins off, and resurrect us in eternal life. There are two deaths, the death of the body, and then the death of the spirit, or the soul, your eternal soul. What's going to happen to your eternal soul? Not that you're going to live your whole life thinking about that, because that might seem you know, pretty, pretty scary or whatever about death, but it, your life gets enhanced anyway. It's such a joyful way to celebrate your life, because you will realise one day, whether it's when you take your last breath or not, that your whole life has been about Jesus Christ the whole of your life. The Holy Bible is a love story of a father and a son and the lengths they've gone to to save your soul. And you can't even have the heart and the eyes inside your heart to see what God's done for you. Um, he's done many, many wonderful things and he will step into your life, as I said. Open yourself up, ask, and he will be there with you. The living God, the living water, he's with, he's, he is alive, he's resurrected. That's what was written in the scriptures. That's, that's, what, we're, that's what we're here, that's what they've hidden. They, want, they don't want you to believe it's true. Because then, the war in the spirit, with Satan fighting for your soul, he wants your soul because he hates you so much, because he hates God and he rebelled against God and he knows that God loves you and loves man's soul. He wants, he wants that. And in the spirit, he can fight and can fight for it by putting things into your life, into your world, into your thoughts, so that your spirit is affected. And once that's happened, it can gain control of your will, mind, and emotions. So whatever your will, mind, and emotions are doing with, as a result of what the spirit is telling it, you will either sin against God with your mouth, with words, or shouting, screaming, swearing, cursing, or your body, you will go and sin against the Lord because Satan has managed to infiltrate your spirit somehow. Um, when we know Jesus, we all still sin anyway, we're all sinners, and God have mercy on us, but we recognise and we can repent of our sins and, t and tell God how sorry we are, um, and get baptised in the name of Jesus Christ and get a brand new spirit, a brand new baby spirit, um, and that's ultimately uh, what, what this is all about. So here we go, so Jesus died, he rose again to gain victory over Satan in the grave. Satan knows who is saved and who isn't saved, but he doesn't care whether you're saved or not saved. If you're not saved, mostly he'll leave you alone because you, you, you're not recognizing God anyway, so he's already got your soul. If you are saved, he's going to try and take your joy away from every living moment that you have by putting false thoughts into your mind and ruining uh, your life as much as he can. So, Jesus... Once he died and resurrected and gained victory over Satan, he ascended and seated at the right hand of his father, where he has got all authority, all authority over all principalities and powers, which are the rulers of this world in the spirit. So it's not the evil men of the world, it's the spirits that are controlling and manipulating those men of this fleshly world on behalf of the father of lies. Jesus has got the authority. And Jesus' blood gives you the authority to trample on snakes. You are defeated, Father of lies. You are defeated in his name. Behind me, you old dragon. You have no power unless I and my will give that power to you. So, in the army of God, the Lord Jesus is my commanding officer. The Holy Bible, my code of conduct. Prayer and the whole armor of God are my weapons. Warfare, I have been taught by the Holy Spirit, trained by experience, tried by adversity, and tested by fire. And Satan, you don't stand a chance. So, yeah, it's a lot of lies. Um, now, it'll stop at nothing. He will stop, he will lie about the shape of the earth. 
He will lie about everything. He will lie and tell you that the spirits are coming to the medium and it's your grandfather and it's such a body where they've had the gold and all the rest of it. It's not. It's a demon in disguise so that you won't turn to God. The more I've turned to the Bible um, and I fellowship and, I, and, and witness my friends um, doing this following Jesus, witnessing things happening in our own lives as well. It's undeniable, especially when we were involved in occult practices, knowing that we were deceived now, not knowing what we were tampering with, not knowing what we were getting involved in. And this truth coming to us through the flat earth truth is just, you know, a, a blessing indeed. So the war is in the spirit. Now the wages of sin is death. The father of lies or the lord of lies can only affect you or take you away from God through sin. So he uses whatever he can in this world because he, he is uh, some sort of ruler over the world of flesh. He's very fleshly. Uh, and two of the things are sex and food that he can get in with, you know, really easily. And now with TVs and the internet, etc., can, you can just put anything out there um, to take you away from God. So he wants to make men sin against God. Even if they're saved in Jesus, he still wants to make you keep sinning, you know, and taking you further away from God as much as he can every single day. So how are they fought for? Jesus, you see Jesus and be saved, that's it. See Jesus, welcome into your world, your life, and, and watch him redeem you, rebuild you, remold you with the Spirit of God and the Holy Spirit present with you. And the way I came to understand it in a very simple way was when, when man, man fell with the temptation and the bite of the apple, we were in the garden with God and, and we can look at each other and God loves us and we love God and there's no sin. And then the serpent tempts Eve and she bites the apple and sin falls upon man. So then God, who cannot be around sin, he cannot see us anymore. He cannot, sin cannot be where he's at. And we couldn't see God either. So we fall away. And because we can't see God and we're not with God anymore, he's not walking in the garden with us, we have a hole in our soul. We have a hole in our soul, a big gaping hole. And what do we do to fill that hole? We ask, well, we make, first of all, we make false gods. A god of the sun, a god of the stars, a god of fertility, this god, that god. Try and fill, but it's, the false gods, they're not going to fill that hole that's Yahweh, the Father, the Creator, is missing because he can't see you anymore. Then also we fill our holes up with addictions and gambling and all the worldly things now that are temporarily maybe satisfying for a while, but it always comes back. The big game, you cannot put God in the hole yourself. That is not possible. So God sent his son. God sent Jesus. Now, if you can look and see his son, the way back, the way, the truth, the life, and God can see you again. Because only through Jesus are your sins washed off. And if you will not see him, then God will not see you. And whatever happens to your eternal soul, well, you always have the choice, and you cannot deny from this day forward you haven't heard these words either. In a very simplified way, that's what's happened. So, uh, Satan, uh, the father of lies, uh, he's a tempter because he tempted Eve. He tempted her. He's full of temptations. Oh, it's so this and it's so that. Come on, come on. So he's tempting you now with, from again, the book of truth. He's took the book of truth and he's pulled a lot of stuff out of there and he's put it in a big pot and stirred it all up and he's come up with other religions and ideas and lots of strange, wonderful things that me and Kim have joined in on a few occasions, you know, and, 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 and actually talked about it with ourselves and said, why is my life worse than it was before? There's no salvation in any of that. So Satan will keep producing things that are going to tempt you away from God. And if you're not saved, it's like, oh, another one. And when somebody is going to get saved, he hates it and he's going to do anything he can to try and pull that person back. So he's only got temptations to tempt you away from God with. So be very discerning. And these other religions, 
They're all false. No one, nobody died for you. Nobody in those other religions shed their blood, washed your sins off and died because you're that important. The flat earth idea also brings about an importance and a significance that the spinning ball world doesn't bring about. You are so important. You are so significant. You see, you're created because that's what the flat earth is going to bring you back to, that something created the earth for you to live on. Something created you. Find him. Find the God of the Bible, but do not pray to Yahweh once you've found the God of the Bible and thanking him for all his goodness. Only through his son will he turn again and see you once more. Only through his son. Jesus Christ is the saviour. So there that there he is. Look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. And we can also do, we'll do this later, we're going to put on the full armour of God. This is so that your spirit is protected in the heavenly realms because whether you know this is happening or not, this is happening. And this is recorded in the scriptures. And when you welcome Jesus Christ, a living God, into your life, not through any religious dogma or indoctrination like that, there is no ritual to follow. We don't have to be good like the Pharisees and the scribes of the day, walking around in our finery, telling people that we should be and shouldn't be, and actually m missing the point. Well, God's arrived. Hello? Oh, no, that's not God. That's, uh, the law of Moses doesn't say that. Well, they couldn't recognize him when he showed up because they didn't want somebody taking away their authority. And they've given their authority to the enemy by doing that. So, yeah, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, eternal life. You might not understand what eternal life means right now, and you might be quite happy in your, in your life that you've got. But there will come a time when you take your last breath, and you'll still have a soul that's eternal. You might, know you've, you might not know you've got an eternal soul. You might think that's it. But, you'll, you, but you won't know. You won't know till it happens. And what if it is too late then? What are you going to do then? But right now, you can call upon Jesus Christ and you can welcome him into your heart, your life, your world and watch and witness him yourself. And then you'll know because that's, that's the only way that you'll know. So I've explained this a little bit before. So the spirit serves God, the body serves the soul. The soul, well, soul serves the spirit, the body serves the soul. So we're all, it's all intertwined. And since I've discovered this truth, I have to be discerning. And sometimes things are happening in my life and people are put in there or thought, it's like, oh, where's, where's that come from? But now I'm aware somebody's really trying to somebody really tried to stop me coming here today you know through the week making us ill and what have you and things happen it's like no I keep turning back to Jesus I don't at once one time we had a conversation here earlier with someone about well you know if, if God is true then you know why are these bad things happening well everybody wants to blame God for the good and the bad when actually God is good and just and he wants what's best for you the enemy wants what's worse for you and he has got some power over this earth as well to cause um, afflictions, addictions by, oh, go on, just have a sneaky one, nobody will know. Or, oh, yeah, go on, I'll just do that. Nobody will see me. God sees everything. So, yeah, whether you, if you sin against God and you're on your little own, God's where with you. So it really makes you do, you want to be a better person. Um, you want to do your, your, your best, your, the best that you can in your life. It does alter and affect you from, from a heart point of view. And not just about doing good works either. Really feel that presence. And you, you, aren't, you are not God. That is an absolute insult from what, what we've discovered as well. But I'm willing to give the glory to God for every wonderful thing and every bad thing that ever happens in my life because I know that I can always turn on God. Jesus Christ.
and he shows up and he sorts things out. He gave me a brand new life. He gave me a brand new partner and new friends and new things happening like this. He's brand new life in a very short space of time when I thought I was wretched and nobody, nobody, there was only God left to turn to and God showed up. And that's just my own personal testimony, but there are people in this room who have got other testimonies like that to share as well. So be discerning about thoughts that you're having or gut feelings or like, hmm, you know, be discerning about that and where it's coming from. And you can test the spirits. So if the spirit, I you know, looked into this recently, like, how do you test the spirits? You ask that spirit or that thought, do you believe Jesus Christ is the son of God? If it doesn't, it'll flee. So this is an overview of how uh, these demons are working uh, in the air and what they can do. Um, they're assigned, so that they're assigned operations on your family generational line right back to the days of Adam. So, because the hierarchy of angels that fell with Lucifer with Satan we're already in some sort of um, strategic order a bit like an army so they kept their positions and it's a, probably like a pyramid structure with it's like commanders and going down so you'll have people you'll have demons like the tormentors illness demons um, addiction whatever it might be you know how how is it in some families, the, the great grandfather was an alcoholic, and then a few generations down the line, such a body is an alcoholic. Oh, it's in our genes. No, it's not. It's a demonic spirit manipulating and controlling your generational family line. Um, so, knowing that it's like when you go to a medium or a spiritualist, they will tell you, um, oh, yeah, your grandpa hid the gold in such a place, you know, under the wardrobe uh, with a silver key or whatever. Nobody else knew that, but the demons know everything, so they. Uh, imitate your ancestors and come and they can use mediums because they are open to the satanic ways and they give their will over to Satan so they can come in and tell you what's happening and you think it's your grandfather or your ancestor that's speaking through them in actual fact you know you're being deceived again it'll stop at nothing to stop you turning to God so Sorry? They can't read your mind, they can observe you. Well, they can't read your mind. They can't read your mind, but they can put thoughts in. They can't, you can't read your mind. He's got certain powers. He's not got the powers of God, but he has certain powers over this, this world. So here's a few things. They can talk, see, have memory, free will, feelings and emotions, including anger and fear. They seek to and fro on the earth and seek rest. So they can accept worship, they have intelligence, know their time is short, recognize who the saved are, testify to the validity of Jesus Christ. They believe in one God. They're aware of the destiny and they influence men through lies. Any lies, they're not bothered, they'll stop at nothing. So the flat earth, knowing, I do believe it's the biggest shift in consciousness is Jesus walked the earth. Um, it is a calling card from God to get closer because he's calling out for the people, he's calling out. Um, and again, it's your free will. God's given it to you. And whatever you do with it, it's up to you. So there's a, a battle going on in the spirit, whether you know it or not. Um, and there's some amazing testimonies out there which can prove this. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So, so something, and angel, angels are fighting for you in the air against the demons, fighting for your will, mind, and emotions. That's every breath, every breath that you're taking. These do not stop, ever. They, do, they, do, they don't stop. They're not going to stop fighting for your soul. It's that important. It's that important to God. It's that important to the enemy. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And nothing shall go to get to the Father unless it's through me. And there it is. As, as fairy tale like as it sounds, I've had some people saying to me, cause it, and, and it's actually, I actually thought to myself, of course it's true. It's so obvious. It's so obviously true because it's the only constant. It's always been there. And it's that in your face. 
they, they offer him uh, in, right there, but then it's, it's covered up with Sananda and the Christ consciousness and all these other fluffy things that they've put around it. So it's a son of God and he can save your soul. Right. Really, I really recommend that anybody that it isn't, hasn't welcomed the living God into their life that they seriously think about doing it. If you go through the flat idea, flat earth idea and the flat earth truth and it brings you there knowing that you're created. Because a lot of people have gone to the Bible because of the flat earth truth, uh, realised that there's a creator and like I said, started praying to the creator but you can't see the books about Jesus. It always has been. The whole book is about Jesus. The whole of your life is about Jesus Christ. And if you don't know that, you're missing out. You really are. Yeah, so be sober, be vigilant, because your adverse to the devil is like a roaring lion. Walketh about seeking whom he may devour. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace and remain at rest. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, praise the Lord. And we're all so thankful that we've stumbled across our feel he, he, he comes for you uh, for some sort of saving grace. Why is this happening here today? You know, why are you sat here today? Um, so, yeah, I'm going to wrap it up there for the presentation, but I will um, put on the full armour of God, if you're willing and you want to. And we are going to do a little bit of music later and a bit of celebration if you want to stay for that as well. With a view to putting more meetings on, with where we can meet up face to face, get testimonies of people, go back into your life, and come back and tell us what's happened. We can, we're witnesses to whatever happens in your life because of this, if you choose, it's your will. It's God's gave you the feel. There's no forcing with Jesus Christ either. He's just waiting there for you. He's just waiting. He's already moved. He's already shed his blood and washed his sins off. All you have to do is look and recognize him and he's there with you. What's not stopping you doing that right now? You know? So, yep. Praise God. <laughs> if you're willing and you want to, and close your eyes and when say the full armor of God okay this is something you can put on every day and it'll protect your spirit it's God's armor so if you want to close your eyes if you want to so you can place on the helmet of salvation you have the mind of Christ the breastplate of righteousness, righteous in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and your heart be protected from the enemy's fiery arrows. Girded strong, upheld and steadfast with the belt of the Lord's truth, the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In your sandals shod in preparation of the gospel of peace, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth holding the shield of faith right in front of your body, right to the floor, repelling all the enemy's fiery arrows, the arrows of despair, depression, addiction, affliction, anything that is negative of the enemy may be repelled with the shield of faith. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, holding the sword of the word of God, cutting through the lies and deceit, the true gospel, the word of God, the holy Bible. Standing against all the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms, and by prayer we claim victory over all the devil's schemes. Your days are numbered. You are defeated. You have no power here. Jesus Christ has given us all authority over the enemy and all the power of the enemy, and nothing by, shall by any means hurt us. We are redeemed, and the blessings of Abraham are ours this day. We are blessed, we are blessed, in the name of the mighty Lord, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. Thank you.